Good evening. My name is Dorian Lewis, and I will be your moderator for this evening's lecture. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Southfield, Michigan class. This is a school, not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating through, throughout eternity to this present day. This school was, was established as the result of a divine vision and revelation given unto our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and various foreign countries. The Southfield, Michigan class was established in 1997. The Dean of the Southfield class is Dr. Marvin Lewis. The President is Dr. Edward Ewell, and the Vice President is Dr. Ronald Atkins. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit as they are contained in the original Hebrew texts. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted with Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted with God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and are not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any letter, letters or characters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus, and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We've drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, Everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man cannot perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. Therefore, the simple yet intelligent question we should all ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? 
a further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and the court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Our primary aims and objectives are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10th, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. At this time, we will have a prayer given by the, the president of the school, Dr. Edward Ewell, followed by a scripture reading, Isaiah, the 28th chapter, read by Dr. Lauren Lewis. Good evening, class. Good evening. Let's all bow our hearts and minds in a moment of prayer. We want to give special thanks to Yahshua Messiah for allowing all of us to be chosen to come and hear the true gospel of our Savior, Yahshua Messiah. And we want to hold on to those things we know that he has endured himself to be our savior. In other words, his blood was shed for all mankind and especially to those that believe that he has done the job to allow us to inherit eternal life and be glorified back into his body from whence all things derive and came from. We want to be Thankful for the gospel that's been given through the divine vision and revelation of Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley's. And we're not praising him, but praise Yahshua who got into his body and give him something that gives us an understanding of the truth because he is the way, the truth, and life. And with those few words, I'd like to say hallelujah. 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 I'd like to say good evening to the class, and I'll be reading out of the King James Version, substituting the true names where appropriate. Displayed on your screen will be the Holy Name Version, containing the Old and New Testament, 
critically compared with ancient authorities in various manuscripts revised by the late A.V. Trina and the Scripture Research Association, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. And that is Isaiah, the 28th chapter. Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. Behold, Yahweh has a mighty and strong one, which has a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with the hand. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, shall be trodden under feet, and the glorious beauty which is on the head of the fat valley shall be a fading flower, and as the hasty fruit before the summer, which when he that looketh upon it seeth, while it is yet in his hand, he eateth it up. In that day shall Yahweh of hosts be for a crown of glory and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people and for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment and for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. The priests and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in visions. They stumble in judgment. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness so that there is no place clean. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. But the word of Yahweh was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Wherefore, hear the word of Yahweh, you scorn from me, the rulers, his people, which is in Jerusalem. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh Elohim. Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet. And the hail shall sweep again, excuse me, away the refuge of lies and the waters shall overflow the hiding place. And your covenant, with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. From the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you. For morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night, and shall be a vexation only to understand the report. For the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering narrow than that he can wrap himself in it. For Yahweh shall rise up as in Mount Purizim. He shall be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. Now therefore be ye not mockers, leash your bands be made strong. For I have heard from Yahweh Elohim of hosts, a consumption even determined upon the whole earth. 
Give your ear and hear my voice, hearken and hear my speech. Doth the plowman plow all day to sow? Does he open and break the cloth of his ground? When he hath made plain the face thereof, doth he not cast abroad the fitches and scatter the cumin and cast in the principal wheat of the appointed barley and the rye in their place? For his Elohim doth instruct him to discretion and doth teach him. For the fitches are not threshed with a threshing instrument, neither is a cartwheel turned about upon the cumin. But the fitches are beaten out with a staff and the cumin with a rod. Bread corn is bruised because he will not ever be threshing it, nor break it with the wheel of his cart, nor bruise it with his horsemen. This also cometh forth from Yahweh of hosts, which is wonderful in counsel and excellent in working. That was Isaiah, the 28th chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Ewell and Dr. Lewis for the prayer and the scripture. And we once again want to welcome everyone out to tonight's lecture. Tonight is regular class and we will be calling on participants in the meeting. And for our first speaker, it is a pleasure to call on Dr. Connor Messerly. Hello, brethren. I knew I was going to get called on. <laughs> about it. Uh, I am in the middle of the driving right now, but I'll still speak since I was called on. So you guys may hear cars in the background because I got hit by a semi truck three days ago. Mm. And yeah, protected me from it and didn't let me die. Mm -hmm. But my car window got shattered and it got messed up. So I apologize for all the noise. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first thing I want to do, since this is a school of research, is to lay down a proper foundation. Mm -hmm. So since this is also going out to all the world on YouTube, I would like to say first that everything that we say here, we don't want you to believe anything we say. We want everyone who sees this video to go home, get their Bibles, get their encyclopedias, Britannicas, anything you got for research and check out what we say. Mm -hmm. Don't believe us. And the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, who was a colored man, said the same thing. He said, don't believe me because I said it, but make me prove it until you are satisfied. Mm -hmm. So to all those people that are on YouTube and that do hear this, you are allowed to come to these classes and you're allowed to answer, ask questions. We don't mind. We actually enjoy it. And uh, so the other thing is this, this school was founded by Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley, who had a divine vision and divine revelation given to him directly from Yahweh himself. Mm -hmm. This mortal man was caught up into the third heaven. And I need someone to pull up the 40 plate chart and show the plate where it talks about cosmogony. And it says first, second, and third heavens. And then I'm going to keep talking because I have my GPS pulled up and I can't change it because I really don't know how to drive. <laughs> well, be careful, man. I am. I'm being careful, but I'm bad with direction. So I'm using a GPS. So I can't see the, uh, the Zoom screen. It's up. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, great. So this man was caught up into the third head. This is what we call eternity. This is also what's known as the spiritual realm or the incorporeal realm. This is the realm where angels exist as well as demons used to exist before they got demoted and cast out of heaven and were turned into demons. In this realm also exists Yahweh Elohim who is also known as Yahshua the Messiah. 
So everything that we see in this physical realm, I need someone to get for me Romans 1, 19 and 20. Mm -hmm. And um, you got it? Yep. Romans 1 and 19. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature, so that they are without excuse. Thank you very much. So that's basically saying that everything physical that we see is has a it has a spiritual principle connected to it. And I'll give you an example of it. Water. We know water as a common drinking supply on this planet that I will say has been polluted to the point where it's undrinkable now. Mm -hmm. But water is a great example of the eternal nature of Yahweh because it exists in three different states or conditions at the same time. Mm -hmm. the first state is water vapor a lot of people also call it steam and this is the gaseous form of water you cannot see it but it is always there it never goes away your body is actually surrounded by it everyone's body is everyone's body is filled with it and it it it's everywhere. You can't get outside of it. Mm -hmm. It's like a cloud. All right. The second form of water or the second state of water is what we call water. That's the one. That's the state that we drink when we drink a bottle of water. It's also the state that makes up 70% of our body. And mm. this is everyone's body. And this is also the one that you see if you put a, a water of cold water on the counter, you will see, <clears throat> see what is condensation or water on the glass. This is the second form of water. You could also find it on cold windows or wa the water droplets on windows. All right. The third state of water is what everyone calls ice or as scientists call, a solid. Mm -hmm. This is the form of water that everybody gets out of their fridge when they want a cold beer or when they want a cold glass of water or whatever they drink. We put ice in our drinks and it makes it a lot colder and it makes it sometimes taste better. So this refers to the supernal nature because in Yahweh's original state, he is light itself. He has no shape and he has no form. Mm -hmm. He is completely invisible, incomprehensible, inscrutable. Mm -hmm. Basically, to sum it up in one word, you cannot see him and you never will. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Or as Dr. Finley would always say, it's an impossibility to get outside of Yahweh to look back at him. Mm -hmm. He's infinite, which means he just goes on forever, ever, and ever, and he has no beginning, and he has no ending. Mm -hmm. Everything exists within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. Everything Mm -hmm. Dr. Russell, are you still there? Uh oh. We may have lost him. We'll give him a few seconds to see if he can. Uh, maybe his connection is just bad. Dr. Messerly, are you able to uh, hear us? 
Hmm. All right. Well, sorry about that, guys. Uh, okay, yeah, he just dropped off. All right. Uh, okay, so we will move on to our next speaker. And for our next speaker, it is a pleasure to call on Dr. Carol Holder from Texas. Good evening, class. Good evening. <laughs> that was a surprise. <laughs> um, I would like to first start off by saying it is always an honor and great pleasure to have anything to say in regards to my creator, Yahweh, Elohim, who I would not or should I say we would not have known anything about. And so therefore, because the founder H.C. Kinley had a divine vision and revelation that we have anything to say in regards to Yahweh. Now, before coming into class, I didn't know, you know that song, didn't know much about history, didn't know much biology, didn't uh, know about the English that I took. Mm -hmm. uh, we, so that just means you didn't know nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how I was not knowing anything in regards to uh, our creator. And so because of this vision and revelation that was given to Dr. Kinley in the year of 1931, I have come to know something for sure mm -hmm. uh, in regards to my creator. Now, he is spirit. I didn't know that. Uh, and can I get that? Yahweh is spirit. Now, I'm not great with uh, scriptures, but just like, ragu spaghetti sauce it's in there i know it's in the book somebody's going to know where it is so forgive me uh that's john 4 and 24. yahweh is spirit okay please please stop for a moment so yahweh is spirit now i didn't know that what spirit was and so Yahweh, being that he is spirit, he is intelligence, he is wisdom, he is knowledge, love, beauty, justice, mm -hmm. foundation, power, strength. Now those are just nine divine attributes of Yahweh, who is spirit. Continue. Yahweh is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And being that he is spirit, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. Now, knowing he made mankind with very little uh, with, with five finite senses and being that he is in this high and lofty state of existence of pure spirit, which we live and move and have our being. Uh, can I get that scripture, please? That's Acts 17 and I'll start at let me start at 20. Let me start at 24. That's Acts 17 and 24. Yahweh that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is ruler of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath in all things. And One second. Please stop. Uh, so being that 
he is the creator of everything. And we thought we had to go to church, uh, make the sign of the cross, get on our knees, raise our hands up in the air, clap, do all these different things and worship our creator in that manner. Uh, and so that's how we were uh, raised or brought up from mom, grandma, whoever, not realizing that he dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Mm -hmm. Now, the body was not made by hands and that's where he dwells within because our body is the temple uh just hold for a moment and get where what don't you know that your body is the temple that's first corinthians 6 and 19 what so no. he says what mm -hmm. don't you know that your body is the temple of the holy spirit go ahead which is in you and it is in you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Which you have of Yahweh and you are not your own. And you have that body of Yahweh. You are not your own. Go ahead. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit, which are Yahweh's. And so this is not our body. This does not belong to us. We were bought with a price, the price mm. that he paid so dearly for, which I'm so thankful that he paid that price. He bought it. And mm. that was by the shedding of his blood for all man, mm. even the angels. And mm. so, we are not our own. Go, go back to uh, where you were before. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's Acts 17 and we left off at 26. Mm -hmm. And has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth mm -hmm. and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek Yahweh. If happily they might feel after him and find him. <laughs> though he be not far from every one of us. We're in so him. he's not far from every one of us because he, with coming into a knowledge, a perfect knowledge and understanding of him, he's within us in these temples that he paid for with the shedding of his blood. He bought, he bought, uh, he bought it. And so he is not far from us because he would be within us. Now, knowing that he gave us a limited way of being that he is spirit, he had to take on shape and form. And therefore in that shape and form brought about order, everything in order. So that those nine divine attributes mm -hmm. took on shape and form as Yahweh Elohim, mm -hmm. and that's order. And everything in the creation was set in order. The waters are bound, the, 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 the separating the water, everything, the, the, the creation, the vegetation, everything in order mm -hmm. according to him. Mm -hmm. And so that's how Moses and uh, the 70 elders uh, and Nadab, uh, Aaron, Nadab, and Abayu, that's what they saw was that super incorporeal form that Yahweh just came out from his high and lofty state and took on that shape and form. And in that state, he created everything. So where are uh, the scripture that says he's the first cause of all creation? Where's that at, Laura? Anybody knows where's that? Just call it out. 
Um, We're looking, Dr. Holder. That's all right. Anybody know? Call it out. I think uh -oh. it might be in Colossians. Try right. Colossians 1. Yeah, Colossians 1. 1, one start at 15. Thank you, Dr. Yu. All right, Colossians 1 and 15. Who is the image of the invisible L? The first one. Okay, part. stop a moment. Mm -hmm. So, Yahweh Loam, who is the image of the invisible L. Is that what you just said? Who is the, yeah, let me start at 14. Uh, yeah, I'll start at, uh, I'll start at 12, I'm sorry. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Who is okay, so he had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Mm -hmm. So that translated is the day of Pentecost, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, we were trans, we are going to be translated into the kingdom. Go ahead. Who is the image of the invisible Elohim? the firstborn of every creature. So he was the first cause of all creation. That's Yahweh taking on shape and form. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, 16th verse, for by him were all things created. That Stop. Are so by him, him who? Him, Yahweh, in that super incorporeal form, Mm -hmm. that's the him go ahead mm -hmm. whether excuse me that are in heaven and that are in earth so this, everything that was created in the heavens go ahead and that are in earth visible, and that is in the earth visible and invisible things that you can see and things that you can see go ahead whether they be thrones mm -hmm. or, or dominions mm -hmm. or principalities mm -hmm. or powers Mm -hmm. all things were created by him and for him and so everything whether it be thrones the kings the queens no matter who you are no matter where you are in life with whatever degrees behind your name no matter what it is that you got going on everything was created for him Mm -hmm. go ahead and by him by him and for him uh-huh mm -hmm. and he is before all things mm -hmm. i'm sorry that's 17 verse. and he is before all things and by him all things consist that's right and so with him taking on that shape and form bringing forth the creation okay then you have where uh, John on the Isle of Patmos. So Moses, when Moses had that vision and uh, at, I was taken up to the third heaven, which I didn't even know it had a, a, one, a first heaven, much less a third heaven. Mm -hmm. And so I thought the heaven was up in the sky there, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And so here you have where Moses was taken up to the third heaven, whereas Aaron, Nadab, and the bayou, they were uh, in, in a little further, uh, further down, and then 70 of the elders, they only saw that uh, Eloistic shape and form. Mm -hmm. They saw that, but they didn't get an understanding mm -hmm. of what they saw. Mm -hmm. And so Moses, being in the third heaven, he saw how everything came about from beginning to end and then you have here with John on the Isle of Patmos, where he saw as a confirmation to that of Moses, mm -hmm. things from the end to mm -hmm. the beginning. 
And so the first thing Moses saw was that shape and form, and then that pattern. And then, I, uh, let me add him. And then uh, John on the Isle of Patmos, see, he is also seeing that shape and form, but in a glorified way. Mm -hmm. Whereas Moses saw him with his hands, uh, according to the chart, his hands is folded. That's because the mystery is locked. Mm -hmm. And now the mystery is being revealed to the sons. Mm -hmm. And so now with Moses having, well, Moses having that, that vision and revelation, he was able to then be accredited for writing the first five books of the Bible Mm -hmm. and gave her in detail with regards to the creation, uh, the genealogy of man, and that tabernacle pattern. Mm -hmm. And so in them coming up out of Egypt, you, they had to do it in a specific way. Mm -hmm. They couldn't do it however they felt like it. It's the same thing with this teaching. There's a specific way. And Dr. Kinley labored and labored in regards to this, this doctrine because mm -hmm. it's not about a person. It's not about uh, the edifices that people may go and worship, the buildings. It is not about uh, a Catholic or a Protestant, it's about the doctrine that you are taught. And mm -hmm. so with this teaching, it brings you to where that doctrine is what will elevate you or raise you from death unto life. Mm -hmm. And so you can you can have your own doctrine or your own interpretation, and I have mine. If we be sons, we would be, we would see the same thing. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can't have your own interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what they did. They 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 saw that Elohim, they saw Elohim, and you know. It, they went out there after coming up out of Egypt. Uh, I'm kind of jumping around. I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, and they, 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 they went and made a calf. Now, when can you read in Exodus 24, uh, 8 and 9, where, they, uh, where they're there in uh, Mount Sinai? And what is it that they saw? That's Exodus 24 <clears throat> and 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. That's right. And there was under his feet, as it were. No, one second. One second. So they had, so he had feet, not hoofs, as they made a, a, a golden calf. So you see, he had feet. Go ahead. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. Mm -hmm. And as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon yeah, the nobles. Clearly, it was a heavenly body. Go ahead. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. And stop. And so he had hands. He didn't have paws hoofs so they saw that of uh, Elohim and made their own theory their own thoughts and opinions in regards to uh making this golden calf mm -hmm. that's not what they saw up there they saw that of a man a shape and form of a man but they did not understand what they saw and this teaching is to bring you to an understanding and you cannot put your own opinion thoughts concept theory 
in regards to this teaching. You mm -hmm. have to take it as it was given and give it back as you receive it. it you cannot change it. You cannot add, you cannot take away. Mm -hmm. And so he labored and labored in, uh, 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 in this teaching to and left us with enough that we can be saved. Uh, 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 and so them coming out uh, of Egypt required specific instructions and therefore, which testified really to him, but they didn't know that. And we are blessed and thankful that we have come to an understanding of the things that happened back in history that it lead us up to him. That's what everything pointed to, but until somebody who has been sent, who knows, right. That's the only way you will know the truth. Otherwise, it's a lie. And so they came out of Egypt in that specific manner of taking out a, a lamb, piercing it in the side. They hold it over from the 10th to the 14th, pierce it in the side, and you know, drain the blood, put that blood on the in on the on the inside of the post of the door from the, you know, dipping from the top, the two sides dipping from a basin, giving you that four points. And you, I watched it. I, I don't want to say you, but I've watched that 10 commandments time and time again, and not really knowing what the essence of what that was about. And mm. so they came out in a specific way and that water, that they got to the Red Sea, they bitched and moaned about everything as we do as human beings. We moan and groan about everything when we're up against whatever it is. And so Moses told them, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. And that's what we have to do. We have to have, we have to stand still and know that he will bring us through whatever it is that we, might, we may deal with. Mm -hmm. And so they came on through. That's when Moses went up and the 70 elders and Aaron ate and Abayu and was given instructions. 33 chapters of Exodus that go into great details of this tabernacle pattern. Mm -hmm. Why? Why so many chapters? Not when you read and you, without understanding, you just not going to get anything other than what you think and believe and, 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 and anything else. And so that is to show forth and he admonished Moses. Now look, you make that according to what I've shown you. Why? Because everything is made by this pattern. You will screw it up if you make any kind of changes because everything goes according to that pattern because that pattern is him. So you can deviate from that. And so that pattern, that tabernacle pattern that they pitched out there in, in the wilderness of Sinai and therefore had to do the services that pertain to this tabernacle and the killing of, of sacrifices and, 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 you know, for their sins, because the, uh, a sin is the transgression of the law. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't even know 
with regards to what that meant. Uh, as a Catholic, I didn't know what nothing meant. Mm -hmm. And so that was because, see, in one man, all die. Uh, can I get that scripture, please? That's Romans 5 and 12. <clears throat> Excuse me. By one, excuse me, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. One second. So by one man, okay? For by one man, I repeat that again. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. That sin entered into the world. What do you mean by that? One man sin entered into the world. See, Adam. When he was placed in that garden, him and Eve, see, they had one law. And that was, don't touch that tree. Because in the day you touch it, you're going to die. Now, they touched it. Eve touched it. Adam willingly died for his bride. And that is so pretty because Yahshua, when he came in, see, he came in and died for his bride. And so the bride is those souls that make up or the sons that make up that spiritual body of Yahweh Elohim. Mm -hmm. He is the head. He is the husband. He is the head and we are the body, the sons. We make up that body. Mm -hmm. And so by one man, sin entered into the world. When they partook of that, that olive branch, I mean that olive branch, that olive, see, I was told it was an apple. And that's why you got an Adam's apple, okay? But you have to see now where it was not an Adam, an, an apple, it was an olive. Olive, O-L-I-V-E, all live. Mm -hmm. And so you have where when they partook of that, Adam did die, but and he did die in the day in both aspects, physically and spiritually. Mm -hmm. Spiritually, because their eyes were closed to the physical and open. I'm sorry, their eyes were closed to the spirit and, uh, forgive me, their eyes were closed to the spirit and open to the physical. Mm -hmm. And that was the death that all man died and Adam died instantaneously when he partook of that olive. Mm -hmm. And then he died at 930 years and physically so. So therefore he did die, even though that's, that, that's what Lucifer had said, you ain't gonna die, you know what I'm saying? He, he did die, 970 in the physical, 930 in the physical, and he died spiritually instantaneously. So that was by all man, sin entered into the world. I was nowhere near being brought into this creation, but I died. Go ahead. Continue. Excuse me, that's Romans 5 and 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. So we had all sin from what took place in that garden. All had sin. Go ahead. 
For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Stop. So until the law, sin was in the world, but <laughs> sin is not imputed where there is no law. So it's just like there's no red light or a stop sign. You go, you go, right? But then when they put that stop sign there, that's the law. I see the five minute bell. There's a, a, a stop sign there. So now that's the law. And if you don't stop at that stop sign, then you get a ticket. So that's where until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. And so therefore, my brethren of the Southfield class, I am thankful to have had the opportunity to come up there and meet face to face um, and hope that I can one day again, uh, make a trip. Um, and so I'm just thankful for the opportunity to share the things that I have learned, know, and understand since being a partaker of this gospel. And with these few words, I would like to say hallelujah. Dorian. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Holder, for that beautiful testimony. And we were very glad to have you in town and have you visit us. And for our next speaker from the Southfield class, it's a pleasure to call on Dr. Rhonda Brazil. Good evening to the class. Good evening. I um I appreciated and enjoyed the remarks of the previous speakers. I um was also looking forward to um I had never heard either of those speakers speak or those vessels used, I should say. I recognize the voice though. <laughs> speaker, if you understand what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and was um, very interested and edified to see what Yahweh had allowed to come through those vessels. Um, I want to pick up where Connor left off and where um, Carol continued about what Yahweh has revealed to us through this vision and revelation. I paid attention to how, um, I, I don't remember her last name, but Dr. Carroll um, brought out that if it weren't for the fact that this divine vision and revelation was imparted to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, if Yahweh hadn't sent someone and as he himself clarified, if Yahweh didn't come himself, you understand, and take up resonance in that body to, uh, to, to share with us his deepest mysteries, we just would not have known anything about it. And um, those things have been on my mind about what Yahweh has imparted to us. And I want to just take the time that was taken with us in the beginning to elaborate on 
the things that Yahweh has imparted, the mysteries that he's imparted to us. And so both speakers endeavor to bring out those fundamental principles that Yahweh imparted to us. Um, if you can go back to the 40 plate chart that um, the first speaker began on, that chart is called the divine pattern of the universe manifesting the purpose. I'm sorry. The divine pattern of the universe proving the existence of Yahweh and manifesting his purpose by the pattern through the dispensations and ages. The field of view is a little obstructed, so I can't read the top right portion of that chart. Um, you want me to zoom in somewhere? Manifesting his purpose by the physical creation, right? Right. Through the dispensations and ages. So just to reread that and make it clear, the divine pattern of the universe, proving the existence of Yahweh and manifesting his purpose by the physical creation through the dispensations and ages. That is a very heavy and very loaded statement. Mm -hmm. As the previous speakers talked about, this divine vision and revelation reveal that there was a divine pattern of the universe. We did not conceptualize, understand, or even appreciate that our heavenly father, and, and please understand what was imparted to us is that our heavenly father did not possess a pattern, but that he was a pattern and can you please get the Moses chart because this chart here is series number two this chart I believe this one is series number two the divine pattern in the universe this chart here is series number one this one was made in chronological order before that chart that we just left which is um, affectionately called the 40 plate chart this one is affectionately called the Moses chart but at the top of this chart which depicts the track of the um, children of Israel from Canaan land into Egypt back up into Canaan land and manifesting or depicting the vision that Moses was given atop Mount Sinai and John on the Isle of Patmos after the Messiah's death, burial, resurrection, confirming one another, as well as Yahshua fulfilling the events that occurred in Egypt all the way up to the day of Pentecost and the events that occurred with Moses back under the law of 1490 BBY that he fulfilled with Peter, James, and John on Mount Transfiguration. This is a lot on this chart. There's a lot. And the top of the chart is titled Elohim, the archetype pattern of the universe. Archetype means original. And we could not have conceptualized that God was a pattern. That is not something he possesses in his toolbox. That is what he is. Elohim is the original pattern of the universe. Right. And that, and you can go back to the 40 page chart. That chart, the 40 plate chart is describing this divine pattern of the universe that is element that proves the existence of Yahweh and manifests his purpose by the physical creation, which was made according to that pattern 
which is Elohim through the dispensations and ages. So this chart starts with a depiction of that pattern. Now, I wanna go back to the Moses chart. And this was beautifully done in our textbook uh, lecture last week, I believe it was, where it was connected or it was explained how these charts are connected. <laughs> these charts are depicting one complete panoramic vision. And they're all testifying to the same thing. Yahweh Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose. Mm. In a very simple, easy to understand, easy to digest manner. Let me stop for a second there and use an analogy. I um, recently underwent uh, um, intestinal surgery <laughs> where they removed a portion of my colon and my appendix. Now, they can't take things out of your body and it not affect you. That's going to change things in your body. And one of the things that it did for me is that it put my body back in the state that it was when I was a child, an infant even, a toddler. And my doctor explained to me that my system is operating as it's healing, the functioning of my colon has not returned to what it was before I had the surgery. So it is advised that I digest foods that are easy on my system or mm -hmm. easily digestible or able to be broken down easily. Mm -hmm. And the doctor, these are not my words, but the doctor said, like a baby, like a baby system. We don't give babies typically steaks. You understand? Whole pieces of meat. We don't do that because that baby system being new cannot digest those types of things at this point. So those foods that we give the baby are broken down. They're pureed or they're, they're put in a simple form so that they're easily digested. Do you know that that is a natural example of what our Heavenly Father has done for us? These charts depict the purpose of Yahweh in baby food form. <laughs> That's, that just tickles me. That's, that's amazing. Yahweh made it simple and easy to digest. <laughs> I love that idea. Mm -hmm. Because what, what comforts me is thinking of myself as a child to Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And the things that Yahweh endures, how children act, the patience, but importantly, most importantly, the love that mm -hmm. is displayed. That is entirely how Yahweh is dealing with us. And we should be very grateful for that. So I listen to the words of the speakers that talk about how grateful they are and, and how much it means to them. And I ask Yahshua to put that in my heart as well, every day that I'm grateful about this. And that's where he's been thankfully working with me about going back to this chart, showing how Yahweh come from that pure spirit state that the previous speaker, Dr. Connor, was elaborating about how Yahweh displayed and showed his operation of coming from that pure spirit state 
into shape and form and later into physical form, the self-same spirit Yahweh moving from one state of existence or form of existence to another and being able to go back and forth in those forms like water does. He made water in this earth plane as an example, as an allegory. That life-giving substance, water, is equivalent, synonymous, and analogous to spirit. You must have water to live. Right. You have spirit to live. I'm talking about both physically and spiritually. You can't live without Yahweh. Like you can't live without water. Mm. You need water. Not only do you need water to drink in the form of water, as Dr. Connor said, but you need water to encompass and surround you as atmosphere. That's part of that gaseous state of water that Dr. Connor started talking about. That's depicting Yahweh in his pure spirit state, which is on this chart. Yahweh is spirit. And just like that gaseous water, you can't see spirit, but you know it's there. Just like you know that water vapor is there, that water in that gaseous state is there, and you know it because if it weren't, you could not breathe. Mm -hmm. That is a vital component of the air that you breathe, which is made up of hydrogen, that's part of water, oxygen, that's part of water, carbon dioxide is that right and nitrogen is that right mm -hmm. four ingredients that make up the air you breathe are invisible gaseous components that you must take in you so i think he had this read i'll quote it and you don't have to get it for the sake of time in Acts 17th chapter starting at the 22nd verse we talk about Yahweh who made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is ruler of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, seeing that he giveth to all life, breath, and all things. For in him, we live, move, and have our beings. As some of your own poets have said, for we are his offspring. We dwell with in Yahweh, we live, move, and have our being in him, not outside of him, like you have never lived outside the atmosphere of this planet. Mm -hmm. In very like manner, you live, move, and have your being in Yahweh, and he must be in you and everything around you, and you must be in him, just like that water atmosphere must be it must encompass you you breathe it in everything on this planet exists because of it and with it and in it mm -hmm. very simple example that's baby food <laughs> we can digest that right. and Yahweh just like that water vapor can condescend mm -hmm. or calm down mm -hmm. from that state the pure spirit state is Yahweh's highest, loftiest rest state. His original state is spirit. He came into shape and form so that you and I and his creatures may be able to communicate with him in visions and revelation. He desired and knew he's going to create creatures with limited capacities. They can't understand anything. They can't see, taste, smell, touch, or hear. So he had to manifest in a form where that was possible. That super incorporeal form is a condensation. Now, don't get the wrong idea. The super incorporeal form of Yahweh is overwhelmingly massive. Because mm -hmm. it's in him, all things are permanently placed or consists now when you're looking if you can zoom in 
if you don't mind, to that portion of the chart that's coming from pure spirit to that shape and form. When you're looking at that shape and form, you don't really get that concept. Looking at it on this limited two-dimensional medium. Mm -hmm. But you see that blue thing up under his feet? That that Moses described in Exodus 24, 9 and 10, that he, Aaron, Nadab, and Abayu, and the 70 elders, as depicted on this chart, saw Elohim, and under his feet was the paved work of a sapphire stone. It says, that's in the law, it says in the prophets that heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. That's, that's him standing on the earth. Mm. That's an incredibly massive form. And that was a depiction in the vision to Moses so that Moses and the children of Israel, Nadab and Bagan, uh, who saw that Elohim form, could understand the magnitude of what they were seeing. Earth is his footstool. And he depicted that to that, to the vision, in the vision. You understand? And all of that is still within Yahweh. <laughs> That's incredible. It's still not outside of Yahweh. So you can understand just how uh, just impregnable that I, I can't even think of a word. Humongous. I can't even think of the word that incorporates. Now that is a super incorporal. Incorporal is angel. Super incorporal. I was just watching the movie, another side point, Dawn of Justice, Batman versus Superman. The first one, the two hour one, not the four hour one. Anyway, <laughs> and what it was depicting about Superman. That movie actually has some incredible principles in it. I was glad I stayed up to four o'clock in the morning watching it. But anyway, I digress. It has some amazing principles about how man thinks about God, how man views God. is <laughs> something, these Hollywood depictions, where man's mind is to be able to depict these things, you see. But one of the things that was in that movie is Superman. He was weakened by some kryptonite mist for a minute. When he came back to his power, you couldn't do nothing with him. <laughs> you understand? He was super. Superman. So this is super incorporeal. <laughs> He's a higher angel than angel. You understand? But looking at that form that way, you don't understand that that is a pattern. So he broke himself down yet again to Moses in the vision and John on the Isle of Patmos. Because if you go over to the other side, you see that John is seeing also a pattern. That is what Yahweh is. He is a pattern. He's the divine pattern, Yahweh Elohim. And so he showed to Moses the minute detail of that pattern in that vision to Moses on the mount. That is an intangible pattern. That is not physical up there in the mount. He told Moses, to build one physically in the wilderness exactly like he saw in the mount. So that, just like that Eloistic form took on physical form, so did that tabernacle. It was first spirit and it took on physical form. That physical tabernacle in the wilderness was a replica of the spirit one that he saw in the mouth. Now that is talked about in the Elohim book. And as we go further, it'll talk about the intangible sanctuary. The one in the wilderness is called the tabernacle of witness. It is reflecting the spiritual. So that pattern, that breakdown of Elohim depicts certain principles about Elohim latent within it. So if you go back to the 40 plate chart, you will see 
in that 40 plate chart, it starts off with that pattern. And the open pattern on the Moses chart, you saw over there with Moses that it was covered over. Those were the mysteries still hidden in Elohim, mm. which is one of the speakers already previously talked about. His hands folded next to that pattern because the mysteries are still locked up in him. On this chart, that pattern starts off and is open. It's depicting those principles that are latent down within the pattern from the ministry to the, the furnishings within it. There are nine furnishings that are depicted primarily in the pattern. The altar of sacrifice in the court roundabout, the laver of water, the cup of holy anointing oil, which sat right at the door, the seven branch lampstand, the altar of incense, the table of showbread. So there's three that are in the court roundabout, three that are in the holy place, and a three in one beaten vessel in the most holy place. The three in one were the two archangels in the mercy seat, which sat as a chest like affair. That was the top of the chest. The chest portion or the bottom of the chest is where the uh, table of stone, the law, Aaron's uh, rod that budded, and a pot of manna were laid inside that chest. The lid was the three in one beaten piece of the two archangels and the mercy seat. That three in one piece was made of one piece of gold. One piece of gold where the cherubim were beaten from the ends of that piece of gold and the mercy seat fashioned in the middle. And that was depicting a spiritual principle. This entire tabernacle is showing the inner workings of Yahweh Elohim and is depicting in this entire tabernacle, how Yahweh's purpose operates. That's what the rest of this chart is depicting. Even from Yahweh going from pure spirit into shape and form, which is what the next two plates are talking about. Theosophy, just as you had the nine vessels in that tabernacle, you had the nine primary attributes. Now, Yahweh has far more attributes than nine. He's infinite. You can't even, you understand? But he's depicting a pattern, which is himself. And he's operating by a specific and definitive pattern. So he's told us in this vision, and we did not know this until this vision told us this. That's why you have nine planets. That's why you have nine numbers in your numbering system. Mm -hmm. That's why you had nine vessels, nine primary systems in your body. You understand? All of those things have not changed, by the way. They tried to change it, right? But what Yahweh told us from the beginning is true and it remains true. So those, just as those vessels are in that tabernacle, those attributes make up that superincorporeal body. And it's depicted on that superincorporeal body. And then the next plates after that depict how this creation came into existence according to that pattern. The same process of coming from inscrutability into shape and form was depicted analogously in the way that this creation came in. Each of those plates picked that. And Dr. Um, Connor was talking about how that came from gaseous state to liquid to solid. And in this, and if you could open that up a little bit, plate number four, we talked about the third heaven. This is talking about the first heaven here and that inorganic altar that's likened to that 
court roundabout state where you had to fire, you had to steam the water. That's your first heaven, that inorganic earth, the core being on fire is like unto that altar of sin sacrifice. And the water being present there like unto that labor, that water that encompassed the earth. Well, you had all of this. This is coming from pure spirit, which is division between spirit and matter. Coming on down into that dividing the spirit and second heaven in that holy place part, that spirit amalgamation conglomeration, Dr. Kinley called it, coming into shape and form. The ions, the atoms, the electron, proton, neutron, which is the building block of every aspect of matter. So it's Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, that three-in-one Godhead transmutating into matter with a proton, neutron, electron. That most holy place, holy place, court roundabout, manifesting and transmutating right into matter. The structure of spirit transmutating right into the components that make up this physical world. That's amazing. We had no concept. And Yahweh broke it down in its simplistic form to be baby food for us. That we might be able to partake and understand something about this vast and incredible creator that we serve. Every plate on this chart is depicting just what it says in that title. This divine pattern being manifest, or if you can pull out again so I can read that title, this divine pattern proving the existence of Yahweh and manifesting his purpose by the physical creation. Everything on this chart depicts Yahweh's purpose according to the pattern. He is the pattern. The pattern is not something different from him. So every event of history in the physical creation also goes by that pattern. We had no concept we read the Bible, like Dr. Dr. Carol was talking about, Adam and Eve in the garden. We had no concept, idea, even good imagination that told us that that event in the garden was a repeat and depiction of the purpose of Yahweh. Yahweh coming from pure spirit into shape and form, into physical, and also returning from physical back to shape and form, back to pure spirit. That Adam was a figure of the Messiah who is the word made flesh, who is Yahweh manifest in physical form. So Adam starts out in the garden, a pristine garden, undefiled, without any, I don't know, without sin, without any guile, innocent like a child, he's placed in a fully equipped garden, able to sustain the man in that physical state. And he's at rest while in that garden with that woman in him. Because that's where Yahweh is in pure spirit. He's at rest. He's not working anything. You understand? in that pure spirit state, but he comes down in shape and form. And why did Yahweh do that? Yahweh did that, which was a crucifixion for him. Going back to how that, um, how that, um, goodness, how that was depicted in pure spirit, how he comes down from that high and lofty state into the shape and form being a crucifixion, he's putting on his work clothes, if you will. He's about to execute the purpose of Yahweh that was determined in the pure spirit state. 
It was already laid out in the pure spirit state. When Yahweh Elohim comes forth, he's coming forth to execute that that the father has already determined to happen. So he reflected that with the man, Adam. He placed him in the garden. He's at rest. And he told the man, as Dr. Carroll was going through, now don't touch of the tree in the midst of the garden. For in the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Notice, and we didn't notice until this vision pointed it out to us, that Yahweh did not say to the man, if you do that, he said, in the day you do that. We didn't see until that was brought out to us that that indicated that Yahweh already foreknew that the man was going to touch it. And our founder, or Yahweh, described to us why that was. Because the man was never intended to stay in the garden. He had to come down out of the garden to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. But a greater and precise understanding of it was that as Yahweh Elohim came down from pure spirit, everything in the creation must go down. So Adam couldn't stay in the garden just as Yahweh didn't stay in the pure spirit state. He came down into that super incorporeal shape and form and he did so willingly for the love of his bride. Dr. Carol also just mentioned it, that Adam, he had to come down out of that garden and he did so for the love of his bride. His philoprogenitiveness was a reflection. That's the instinctive love of a parent for his offspring, Eve was his offspring. Eve was bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, so he said. And therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his bride. And that's what he did. He left from that garden or Yahweh Elohim, his father and mother, and cleaved unto his bride. And they had to leave out of that garden after they disobeyed Yahweh's commandment. Now, Yahweh purposed that to be that way. Dr. Killing, our founder, I'm sorry, Yahweh Elohim, depicted that in the vision to Dr. Killing, explained it to him this way. Now, if Yahweh did not want the man to touch the tree and never intended that, he would have put the tree floating up in the air somewhere. Right. He would have put the tree somewhere the man couldn't get to it, right. on top of a mountain. You understand? With no way up. Mm -hmm. but he put it in the middle of the garden told the man not to touch that because he knew that that man would do or sacrifice himself for his bride just like he did mm -hmm. he has in the scriptures that the children were flesh and blood so the father had to partake of flesh and blood as well he came all the way down to where we are he died, as Dr. Carroll brought out, on that cross in a in likeness of sinful flesh and for sin to condemn sin in the flesh. He did that to absolve us of the condemned conscience that we inherited from Adam when he disobeyed Yahweh. You understand? There's a lot to all of this. And it took many of us years to even understand a portion of it, the way that we do now and Yahweh having broken it down in its most simple form for us to understand something about the vastness of Yahweh's purpose and the absolute operation of his spirit that spirit operation mm -hmm. as Yahweh came out of pure spirit into shape and form that man had to come out that garden you understand? He has depicted on this very chart, plates 14 and 15 next to each other, which were the, uh, the Edenic transgression and the angelic transgression together, showing that they are operating by the same pattern, the same pattern that Yahweh Elohim himself came out of pure spirit 
Adam has to come out of that um, garden, that rest state. Satan has to be cast out of heaven. He's got to come down. You understand? Everything had to come down. The children of Israel got to come out of Canaan land. The leaves had to come off the tree. It just has to come down. You understand? The man has to go to the dust of the earth. It's got to go down because everything is depicting the purpose of Yahweh, that there's a descension in his purpose. But that's not the end of the story because there's an ascension in his purpose as well. As Yahweh took them down into Egypt, as he took that man down to the grave, you understand? So did Yahshua Messiah raise from the dead and conquer death. And by his spirit, you resurrect. And I was thinking about this too, because we had that, um, we had that seminar of, uh, in Florida of the kingdom. And uh, hold on one second, I'm sorry. We had that kingdom seminar. One of the things that was brought out that I have been pondering for a, a minute, and I do want to make this clear. As a child in Yahweh, I am still learning aspects of Yahweh's purpose. I do not know everything. <laughs> and listen, this is the thing that I genuinely appreciate about Yahweh. The more you learn about him for real, not faintly, the more you learn about him, the more you realize how much you don't know. Yahweh is incredible. He's awesome. He's vast. He's infinite. You can't get it, get it all in your little 70 year lifespan in this earth plane. That's not even for real. What you've been given by this vision is a glimpse into the vastness of Yahweh. We have always said this as I come up in this teaching. We are scratching the surface, folks. You yeah. have ages to come to learn about this, Elohim. Things your body can't even absorb while you were yet in this form. You have to take off the flesh to understand some things about Yahweh. You haven't begun to, to grasp. You understand? But that which may be known of him is manifest in you because he showed it to you. <laughs> He showed it to you by a divine vision and revelation. So here, what Yahweh depicted in his purpose is that ascension. One of the things that was brought out in that seminar was that in the kingdom, the subjects take on the attributes of the king. It was brought up by another. Um, and see, that's what I was saying about appreciating what Yahweh says through the various vessels. You understand? He's given us all a count of the lamb. You understand how they did in Egypt? Every man make his count for the lamb. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And all of them that partook of that lamb, you ate the whole thing. So every single one of us have been given something of Yahweh that make up the whole body of understanding and knowledge of him in this assembly. That's why there's not a question that we can ask that Yahweh hasn't answered or has given the answer to somebody in the assembly. You understand? Because everybody makes their count for the lamb. If you can understand what I'm saying. So when that was brought out and when it was brought out in Florida about the attributes of the king and it was brought out about how the subjects in the kingdom, they take on the insignia of that land right? That's the banner that they live under. That's the language that they're a part of. And they, how can I put it? They, they trade with that language. If you're not part of that kingdom and you don't know the language, you're, you're not able to, to trade in that kingdom. You understand what I'm saying? So there has to be a, a commonality between what the king and the subjects, you understand it, how they exist in the kingdom. So you take on the attributes of the king and those attributes of our king savior, Yahshua, are depicted as the fruit of the spirit is listed in Galatia. 
the attributes that are listed on the top of the chart in that Moses chart, those divine attributes. And like I said, there are many others. Kingdom is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. And I was thinking about the attributes of the king. One of the attributes of Yahweh Elohim is resurrection. The overcoming of death. And by his spirit, you can overcome anything, even death. Dr. Killing once put it like this in one of his lectures. He said, you don't let anything so bad happen to you. You don't let anything bad. How can I put this? I'm trying to put it in. Well, let me see if I can remember how he said it. You don't let bad things happen to you and keep you down, he said. That's what he said. Something bad happens to you, you're just in the doldrums and despair. You just can't. You, he said, you don't let nothing bad happen to you and keep you down. Because you have the spirit to overcome it. Mm -hmm. That's one of the attributes of the king. His power, that's his eternal power that's talked about in Romans 1, 19 to 20. For that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For he showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Mm -hmm. Even his eternal power and supernal nature. So that they are without excuse. Right. That eternal power is the power of resurrection the power to overcome. And when I was thinking about the attributes of the king, see, Yahweh is not negativity. Hmm. There's no such thing as he can't. You understand? There's no such thing as that. There's no such thing as Yahweh can lie. Because he's spirit, everything's made up of him. And what he speaks comes to pass. It doesn't ever not happen the way he say, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, let there be light. And there was light. It didn't take time to think about it. How's it going to resist him? It's of his spirit. It's mm. his substance. It has to do what he says. So he can't lie. <laughs> you understand? Can't tell you something that ain't so. Mm. It's so. <laughs> so when he told the children of Israel, I'm going to give you this land. He had taken them all the way down to Egypt. But when he told them, I'm going to give you this land, don't you understand that as a manifestation of his purpose? He come out of pure spirit. That's the death. He come down into physical form. That's the burial. He mm -hmm. come back up from physical form to super incorporate. That's the resurrection. He go back to pure spirit. That's your ascension. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's just the cycle. Mm -hmm. And everything, that's what this chart is depicting. Everything has to manifest that. So he put it in simple terms, A, B, C, D, and E. A is the most holy place. B is that second veil. C is the holy place. D is that first veil. E is the court roundabout. Mm -hmm. You go back into that. As we go through this Elohim book, you'll see what he's talking about. In that A, B, C, D, and E. Very simple to understand the purpose of Yahweh and this, this um, unerring, infallible pattern that he's operating by the descension, the ascension. So we know if something bad happens to us, that's a death. Mm -hmm. You're in that state, that's a barrier. But there must be, <laughs> you understand? You can't sit there in hopelessness because there must be a resurrection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's got to happen that way. So he comes down, he dies the death on the cross to consume death, hell, and the grave, which he depicted with his disciples when they came from that ship and he had the great fish prepared. Mm -hmm. That fish represented the grave. Mm -hmm. That's the grave he had already conquered because he's resurrected with them eating after his resurrection. They're having a vision of him, by the way. He's in super incorporal or in corporal form at that time. They're having a vision with him. And they partake 
of that fish with him, showing that he given them the power to consume death, hell, and the grave. Mm -hmm. Now, why is the fish the grave? Both in the law, Moses wrote about Noah, right? Mm -hmm. He had to take all those creatures into that ark and Noah didn't go out there and lasso people or 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 those uh, animals to get in that ark. It's not how that was. That's in the law that Yahweh caused Moses to write those first five books. And in Genesis, it depicts Noah and the flood. You don't read about Noah going out to have to round up those, those animals. No, they were called to the ark by Yahweh. They were drawn to the ark by Yahweh. No effort was made to go get them. Right. Just as the Messiah says in the fulfillment, no man cometh to the father, but by me. And no man cometh to me, except my father draw him. That's right. You understand? That's what happened in the ark. All the beasts of the field represent those things in earth. All the fowls of the earth or air represents those things in heaven. Have to go back into him. They came out from him back in the creation in the beginning that Moses wrote about they went back into him figuratively in the ark and Yahweh shut the door and the ark resurrected on the water but you know what wasn't in the ark the fish mm. those fish in the water became the graves because those fish ate the flesh of those that were drowned that were not in that ark so they became the graves of those that were not saved. They were death, hell, and the grave. Now, that was reflected again and confirmed in the prophets with the prophet Jonah. When he was not going to be obedient, the tossing of the waves back and forth, they had to cast him into the sea. And the waves quiet it down and Yahweh had a special fish prepared to swallow up Jonah and Jonah said out of the belly of hell cried oh. I that was hell mm -hmm. it was the grave so yeah. when the Messiah in fulfillment as he's the resurrection that was death back there with Noah and all those people got wet that was death with Jonah he didn't get wet <laughs> he was swallowed up you understand but he was consumed in hell and in the grave. But Yahshua is the resurrection. So he overcome death, hell, and the grave. So they couldn't kill him. He said, no man, take my life. I lay it down. I might pick it up again. So does my father love me. You don't conquer Yahshua. You understand? Now with that spirit manifest in you, talk about the attributes of the king, and what it is in his kingdom, those attributes are the attributes you have by the same spirit. And that's what he wrote. That's what he told John and the Allopathists to witness to and confirm what he saw transpire with Moses and to write to the seven assemblies. When you go back and you read that in Genesis, not Genesis, but Revelation, first, second, and third chapters. And he says to each of those assemblies, to him that overcometh, to him that overcometh, because that's what Yahshua's spirit can do. It overcomes anything. That's the ascension. That's right. And so that's what he did with those children of Israel, took them all the way back up to Canaan land. That's what he did with that man, Adam, restore him back from where he fell. You understand? That's what Yahshua did, come up out the grave. That's what he said about the dry bones. He, the wind came through, they came together, he put sinews on them and now they're army. You understand? That's what that body depicted on that resurrection plate, on the Moses chart and on the elementary chart and on this chart, that body resurrecting with him. See, Yahweh's not negativity. Mm. And I had, listen, my mantra is faith and optimism. And if I don't manifest the opposite, like all the time, I'm 
pessimistic, you're not optimistic. But Yahweh is, 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 he's telling me. Now, my nature is not that, you understand? Mm. And I thought about one of the things that my brethren said to me recently about how the spirit of Yahweh, this gospel is not just some academic knowledge of things. This gospel is also something we live. You have mm -hmm. to live it. Right. That means that those attributes take on a shape and form within you. And you manifest the attributes of the king. And I think about how Dr. Kinley was. You know, when I went out there to California in 1999, I asked as many of them elders as I could. Now, what was Dr. Kinley like? What was he like? And it was as if, and I'm not kidding you about this. It's as if these people got on the phone and, and, and talked to one another, said, now, when Rhonda asked this question, you asked her this way. I'm like, everybody. I mean, everybody I asked said the exact same thing. They said to me, he was the kindest man you ever wanted to meet. He treated everybody the same. And I thought about that when this brother said something to me about how living this gospel, that doesn't mean you get yours into hell with everybody else. You have concern or care over somebody. You understand? Those that you want to understand something about Yahweh like you do. You care about people like Dr. Kelly did. I thought about how Dr. Kelly talked about how he was beaten up by the Muslims. There's a couple lectures where he's depicting that. I keep forgetting which one it is on the SoundCloud. I think it's 38, but don't quote me on that. We talks about how he was a prize fighter and he could have turned around and he said, I could have knocked your brains out and threw all of you out the window. <laughs> but he said this and it was deep. And I heard him say this and I've heard Dr. Kinley say this before in another lecture. It might've been talking about the same incident. Yeah. But he said, he said in this one lecture, he said, but I don't have any fight in me no more. After what I saw, mm. he said, I know you don't know what you're doing. And in SoundCloud lecture, he told the audience like this. He said, I said to them what I said to them when I was up here. Mm. And what he, what Dr. Kinley did was walk across that stage. You can hear him walk across the stage and point to the chart. And I know what chart he pointed to. The chart he pointed to folks was the carnal ordinances chart. He said, I said to them, the same thing I said when I was up here, father forgive them for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. And I've seen him talk about that that way in another lecture. They beat him, he said, like they beat me back then. He's talking about when that spirit was manifest in this body. Now, the, the body of Henry Clifford Kinley, that's not your savior. The special prepared body that was born with no sin, that's your savior. But the same spirit that manifests from heaven mm -hmm. that was in the person of Yahshua the Messiah was in the person of Henry Clifford Kinley. And in that same lecture, that one I'm telling you about, Dr. Kinley says, that spirit that was back there, that was in here, that's in this body, is in your body. Mm -hmm. And he's talking to them that are called and that are chosen of Yahweh. That's the same spirit in you. So you got the spirit to overcome. Now that's what he's working with me about. That's right. and, and I am very grateful you listen carefully to what Yahweh is saying through our brethren and these vessels because they have the spirit. And this is what he said also in that lecture. He said, you collectively make up the messianic body, the physical body of the Messiah in this earth plane. He said, he's not in a physical body like he was back there. But that spirit being distributed like that lamb in Egypt they make their count for the lamb. They all had a portion of the lamb in them. 
Some had, I'm talking about the physical lamb. Some can only eat certain amount and some can eat more, but you had the lamb in you. It had to be in you. The same lamb had to be in you. Right. You understand? So the same spirit must be manifest in you. And if it's there, that spirit has the power to overcome. That spirit is the spirit that will translate this mortal body into an immortal body. It's very beautiful. And Yahweh broke that down. And I implore you, you go back and check these things out. We're going through that Elohim book. You pay attention to what Yahweh's saying. He's correcting all of us. Mm -hmm. It's very important. And that's another attribute of the king. When Yahshua, he has a humble nature, not an exalted nature. Mm. Not a I can't be told nothing nature. No, 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 no. All right. No, no. You That's should fine. be. You should be able to receive chastisement. Mm -hmm. Everybody. You understand? And recognize when you are not right. Apologize to Yahweh and be corrected. Mm. Don't stiffen your neck that you can't hear nothing. Uh-uh. We just went through that with a whole bunch of our brethren that used to preach what we preach, and now they don't because it can't be corrected. And we don't want to be found that way. We can't be corrected. Talk about they wrong, and we wrong, it can't be corrected. Uh-uh. That's right. Let's not do that. We're in the last prophetic seconds. You adhere to what Yahweh's saying. Yeah. I hope you got something out of it. I see your five-minute bell, and I'm done. <laughs> and if you have, all praises go to Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you very much, Dr. Brazil, for a wonderful lecture. And uh, thank you to all the speakers, Dr. Messer Lee and Dr. Holder, for those wonderful lectures. And thank you, Yahshua, for giving us another chance to learn of you. All right. That brings a conclusion to our lecture. We thank you all for joining us, all our visiting brother. And we see Dr. Diggs. Uh, there's, a, there's quite a few on here. I can't, I can't say all the names, but thank you all for joining us. And uh, we hold classes here on Zoom on Tuesdays and Thursdays from um, 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And on Sundays, when we're on Zoom, it is from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, when we're in person, it is 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we stream our in-person classes directly on YouTube. You don't have to go to uh, Zoom. Just go right to our YouTube page and you will see us. All right. We will close now with the doxology, which is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong all glory majesty, dominion, and power for all times, now and ever. Let us all say, hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.